My name is James Harris. I'm president of the AUDSI Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, Lone Star Chapter. That's a mouthful. And um, we represent AUDSI members in Texas. I'm not going to bore you like I have in many meetings past with what AUDSI is and what we do and all of that detail, but I will touch on a couple of things. Uh, for tonight, we're already 45 minutes into our agenda, and we're really ready to start. Um, we'll be going around the room here in a minute and introducing ourselves to one another. I'm glad to see a fairly good turnout for our first meeting of the fall. First of all, those, Josh was there, Dr. Huff was there, I was there, I know several of you, Ron was there, Ellen was there, that's right, Francis was there. Lots of people were in Vegas, baby, um, <laughs> for the convention recently. Uh, next year it's back to D.C. on Monday, but I have to say, this show is the, the premier show in this industry, um, period. I mean, there's just no doubt. And I've watched this thing grow from, first one I went to was like 1996 or 7, somewhere in there, it was about 1,200 people. Now it's 8,400 companies. Walk your legs off trying to get to all of it. It's, it's not to mention all the technical papers and things that are going on. It's fabulous. So if there's any way you can make it, Josh took vacation and flew to Vegas just to go to the show. I mean, he couldn't get the company to spring for it, so he went on his own. It's, it's that much fun. Um, please, those of you who knew Dr. Reyes, um, the ABSI Lone Star Chapter is the keeper of the Reyes Memorial, um, was actually a memorial fund, which does a couple of things, one of which funds some of the student chat or some of the student entries into the uh, competitions around the country. And then right here at UTA, there's two students each year, one or two students get a get an award um, named after him. And uh, so if you can if you can't please give generously to that fund. You can always use that donation. Uh, there's an upcoming board of directors meeting for ABSI, the board itself. And as a chapter president, I'm allowed to attend that. We have a big meeting coming up in Huntsville. It's the yearly strategic planning session. This is where they take two and a half full days of these board members' time to plan the future of ABSI. If you have any wants, complaints, criticisms, whatever about the organization, let me know because I, I actually have the board members' ears. Sometimes they've even had a couple of glasses of wine and they're willing to listen. So it's really uh, it, it's a good time. All right, uh, future meetings. Here in four weeks, I wish it right here, but it's probably going to be another room. Uh, it's not going to be here. It's going to be at the Research Institute in four weeks. Um, and we'll get the maps out, how you get there. It's over on the Blue Bay 20 area, not far from here. And um, retired Lieutenant General Rick Lynch will speak at that and show us that he's now the uh, executive director, I should say, for the uh, UTA Research Institute, and we'll get to see some of the labs and some of what's going on over there. He'll introduce us to what's going on with the plans for that um, for that organization under, under him will be. Uh, then, then a few weeks later in November, we got a program back at UTA. Uh, have a lot, we don't have final details of the speaker yet, but we're watching for that. Um, there is a meeting going on in Austin. It'll be mid to late October. And some of you may have made the trek down there uh, to see the facility that the Solid Concepts has down there. It's fabulous. It's a, it's how would you describe it? You're the expert at it. Uh, they do, they do. Uh, they do uh, additive manufacturing technology. That's it. Additive manufacturing technology. And this is more than just the stereolithography kind of thing. This is real materials, a broad range of materials in the base that can be manufactured this way. This is not just prototype or form fit. This is real parts, basically printed in 3D. And they've got a tremendous amount of capability down there. And it's just cool to walk through the factory and see it. But in addition to that, we'll also get to hear uh, somebody from Elvin, maybe Pete Clyde, who you've heard before, uh, or another one of his colleagues talk about how they're actually using uh, solid concept services in manufacturing of their own main systems. So there'll be an actual case study. And that's mostly what I had to say. There's one other thing, and I was talking to several of you before. Last week I met with a gentleman by the uh, name of Larry Calton, and he runs a place called InTech. None of us have ever heard of InTech. And that's probably because until recently, 
It was focused on a different market segment. It was focused on bringing small entrepreneurial companies in the specifically medical devices and medical technology into fruition. They provide an incubator of sorts where upstart companies can, can get a good foothold on, on the market. They provide market, uh, excuse me, office space and lab space and that sort of thing up in Frisco. And then once the company gets big enough, they either go out and get their own offices or they fold. I mean, that's what happens with them starts sometimes. So one of the things that uh, Larry is now doing is branching into other areas, not just MedTech. And, um, and he actually has a, uh, you see the logo there on the right, Entrepreneurial Opportunities Series. And the next one in that series is what are the emerging commercial applications and potential markets for an upstart company in unmanned systems in the commercial world? So he decided on his own, I had not even met the guy, that he wanted to do that as part of his uh, Intech Incorporated series and reached out to, and joined AEBSI first of all. I saw that on the net, gave him a call and we connected. So now it turns out that AEBSI Lone Star Chapter will be lending our brand to that event, it will be a cooperative event. And uh, Francis just agreed tonight to be one of the panelists on that event. It's a, it's a half day, less than a half day event. Starts with breakfast and goes till mid, mid late morning. So uh, that's something that your chapter will be involved in. Uh, if you happen to know anybody who's got a, uh, you know, got some venture capital, looking for something to invest in, or perhaps an idea they want to try to bring to the market, the time's right. Come see what some of the opportunities are. We hope with this panel to show what the potential markets are, where the companies might want to focus their, their efforts. He's called it by land, sea, and air, the rapidly growing commercial application for our medical systems. That's a long time. Finally, uh, I'll introduce Francis Govers. I've known Francis for six, seven years now, um, but he's been involved in unmanned systems long before I did that. Uh, here I was, an airplane guy, working for Bell Helicopter, and at the time he was a deputy, um, let me get this right, I think he was the deputy chief engineer for the uh, Future Combat System Army program, dealing with all the unmanned ground vehicles, among other things. And, uh, and, and after that he's, he's designed over 20 vehicles, not all ground, various domains, and, uh, and just has a wealth of knowledge in this business. Recently, he joined um, Airship Ventures, is that what it's called? Yeah. Blimp Guys. So he's going to talk to us about blimps, which I know basically nothing about. I only know about things that go walk off, and this thing just kind of floats up in the air. So he's going to tell us about that, and I suppose, I hope, some of the content of Unmanned. So thank you, Francis. Let's briefly go around the room and introduce ourselves before Francis starts. I'll 